Hello everybody, I am the Craft Ocular Creator and today I am sharing a process video for a royal birthday card. During this video I create a spanner card and use a range of stenciling, die cutting and copic colouring to decorate. Full disclosure here, the video will contain bloopers. It was just one of those kinds of crafty sessions, we all have them and rather than editing out the whoops moments I thought I would keep them in for comedy value. Before I begin, I would like to ask you to get clicky for Vicky. This is my own catchy way of asking you to like, share, comment and subscribe. Supplies will be listed throughout the video as blooper number one. I forgot to press record when laying out what I wanted to use. Everything will also be listed in the description box below. I begin by creating a spanner panel card base. I use the measurements from the Split Coast Stampers blog and this will be linked in the description below. I score a A2, sky, A2 size card base measuring 4.25 by 5.5 inches. I use a scoreboard to create the score line. I then use a Fiskars trim out to cut one quarter inch from the right and the left. Blooper number two. Thankfully, I realised I made a wrong turn here and didn't cut the back panel of the card. I reinforce the score lines and call it done. Although eagle-eyed viewers may spot something I hadn't at this point, the two side panels were different widths. I wanted to make my own background for this, so I used the Miss Ink Alice background stencil pack. I start with the diamond layer and use Distressed Oxide Lumberjack Plaid as I love this red. I hold down the panel with magnets and dab the ink using Picket Fence Studios ink pouncers. Once this layer is complete, I take the heart layer, line up the etched lines on the stencil and repeat the process. I wanted to bring in a little gold on this background, so I watered down a gold metallic watercolour to add splatter. This gold ties in beautifully with the gold clock that I die cut next and then I die cut the hands. I use a piercing tool and mat to create a small hole for the brad and then I attach the pieces together. This was a little fiddly for such tiny elements but I'm pleased I persevered. I trimmed the stencil background off screen to fit the panels. By this point I had realised that I needed to make one more card base with equal size panels and I also embossed a panel of cardstock with clocks to give it a little more interest. I noticed that the red cardstock that I had taken out was not a good match to the rest of the card and so I ink blended a panel with lumberjack plaid distress oxide. I trimmed this down and to go on the middle panel and did the same with some black cardstock to use as a mat for the stencil panels. All of this will make sense as I start to build the card. In this scene it all starts to come together quite nicely and it does make more sense. Happy that it starts to take shape here, I decide what images I want to add. I use the Miss Ink Queen of Hearts set. I stamp the images on using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink on Nina Classic Crest £80 cardstock. I choose the Copic, markers color, the Copic marker colours off screen and start to colour. I love to colour these images. The different sections of the Queen's dress allows me to be creative with colour choices. And this stands for the White Rabbit too. I make sure the two images coordinate where possible with the colour choices.
Once the images are coloured and fussy cut, I lay them out on the card and think about the sentiment. I stamp a long fawn wavy sentiment on a wavy banner for the front. My thinking here was that the rabbit was making the announcement using the trumpet. Before I add the sentiment, I attach the rabbit and the clock used to the spanner piece using liquid glue. I want the queen on the inside of the card and use the sentiment which says, let the heads and fun times roll. However, and it has been a little while I know, it's time for another blooper. I take the risk of stamping directly onto the panel and don't quite get the whole sentiment inked up. I know this can be put right though and take another piece of cardstock to cut and cut to the, rest, the correct size to stamp the sentiment once more and simply glue it over the top. Haha, <laughs> I stuck it upside down. I've given up numbering the bloopers at this point. I take another panel and put this right and finally attach the queen to the inside of the card using liquid glue. I come back to the front of the card and secure the hands of the clock as I become a little bent out of shape and then I applied the happy birthday sentiment using liquid glue once more. Whoops, there goes one of the clock hands. Thankfully, I secure this back on with liquid glue. With a huge sigh of relief, I finished the card. I loved the final result, but oh my ears and whiskers, did it take a long time to get right. I hope you could watch this video in the light-hearted manner that I intended. I kept the bloopers in for a little comedy and also to pass on the message that mistakes can be fixed with a little patience and creativity. This card was inspired by episode 198 of Craft Roulette. The parameters can be seen on the screen. I have a spanner card with a large clock with a dial as the centrepiece. I had a peacock butterfly in mind when I chose the colours. The reds and blacks are perfect for the Queen of Hearts theme. With mention of craft roulette and parameters, I have included a slide of what it is all about and hope, if you haven't already, subscribe to Craft Roulette. It is so much fun. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to get clicky for Vicky. It would mean the world to me and I promise that not all of my videos are like this. Ta-ta for now everyone. Take care and I will be back soon.